Welcome to Legistorm. Legistorm is the most current and timely database of congressional staff information currently on the market. An encyclopedic suite of services in one package. Powerful, affordable, easily navigated. Legistorm is primarily known for its staff search capability, but it actually does much more. It tracks in real time in a more an enormous amount of data. It will allow you a fraction, we're gonna show you a fraction of the data that it actually provides today. What we're looking at is the Legistorm dashboard. Each one of these partitioned areas that we'll be looking at is its own silo of data. The most recent items will be listed on the face, and then in all cases, you can drill back into the archive down in the corner through this hyperlink. First, a couple of navigational pieces. Wherever you are within Legislorm, Legislorm, if you need to come back to the surface, back to the dashboard, regardless of how deeply you've drilled into the data, you can always do so through this logo or through the home button here. If you know specifically who you're looking for, you can always dive right in to the home to the global search box. If you know that you're looking for a specific individual or a specific organization, again, you can dive right in. Over here, we have a logo that talks about our app, which sits on your iPhone or your Android. It is a scaled down version of Legistorm that sits in your pocket so that if you're in the halls of Congress and we need to pull up a profile of a member's staff, you can do so instantly on the fly. Everything that you save within Legistorm is kept within your profile. Any contact lists that you build, any power briefs that you create, any notes, any lightning alerts, all of which we'll talk about in a moment, your footprint is always indelibly saved within your profile so that you can go back in the future and retrieve information and see, of course, where you've been and what you've done. We're going to return to the dashboard via the logo here. And finally, before we get started, just a brief uh, uh, a bit of information about our weekly update of information. Over here on the left, we've got our weekly update. This is a running tally of all the uh, various kinds of data that we build during the week. It's not done really uh, on a weekly basis. It's done perpetually. It's built in real time. And there are two items that I'll point out very quickly here. Uh, this week we have built in excess or tracked in excess of 64,000 new tweets and over 15,000 new press releases. So the reason I say this is because Legistorm tracks a sea of data, which is so deep that unless you had a system like Legistorm to mine it, you would not be able to pull out specific information very effectively. In other words, it's just so much information that the beauty of Legistorm is it allows you to identify and extract very specific information very quickly. So now we're going to walk through the dashboard and through the specific areas of information. The very first two sections we talk about are upcoming House and Senate hearings. And the easiest way to use this is through the calendar view, which I'll show you in a second. What you'll find, normally speaking, and these aren't normal times because we are in the midterm election, but normally what you find is a scheduling of all upcoming hearings in a calendar view, which allows you to look out into the future and drill specifically into specific days and see what's scheduled for that day. So calendar view uh, has described, and then of course you can go back into the archive all the way back to 2007. Now looking at upcoming Senate hearings, we'll go into the first one here. This is the Senate Homeland Security and Government Affairs Committee. It's going to be meeting on October 10th. If you wanted to track this hearing, in case any, of the, any changes are made to the witnesses or the location or the time, you can do so. You can add it to your existing calendar now, or you can track it for the future. This sets up a lightning alert. We save the alert and we forget about it. It's sitting in our profile. We've linked automatically to the profile now and we see that the alert 
is automatically set until we turn it off. You can also search hearings. As mentioned, hearings can be searched. If we wanted to search for hearings having to do with, for instance, the insurance industry, and we wanted to search all the way back to April 1 of this year, we could do so quite easily. Set in our date, set in our keyword search, do the search, and what we find is an immediate list, and there haven't been any. So maybe we go back a little bit further. So now we've set our search all the way back to the 1st of December of last year. We've searched within the Senate. We simply put in our parameters, we create a search, we hit the search button, and we come up with all of those committees having anything to do with insurance all the way back to the 1st of December of last year. So it's very easily uh, mined for information. If we wanted to be alerted to any hearings that have to do with the insurance industry going forward, we take out our dates so we don't inhibit the search. We set a lightning alert. It's immediately created. We're going to be alerted instantly. We save the alert and it goes into our profile. We can forget about it. Moving down the dashboard into the other areas, we include the House floor ticker, which is a running catalog of all events taking place on the House floor at any given time. We also include the House floor schedule, the Senate floor schedule. Moving down the page, we track, and this is the area that we're known for the best, where we track all staff hires and where they've landed. We track all recent staff departures and where they've come from. And we track all recent job changes. So if a staffer changes from one job to another within a member's office, we track that movement. If they move from one member to another, we track that movement as well. We also track all policy reports. We track five different kinds, CBO, GAO, CRS, executive orders, and statements of administration policy. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Moving to the other side of the page, we have a section called Caught Our Eye. This is merely an interesting item that uh, resides within our data, uh, something that jumps off the page at us. Sometimes it's breaking news. Uh, we always mention it in this section on a daily basis. We track all recent revolving door additions. So this is the movement from K Street to Capitol Hill or from Capitol Hill back onto K Street. Anyone who's been in the lobbying world and moves to a member's office, we track that movement and vice versa. If they've been with a member and they move into lobbying, we track that. All of the recent items are all on the face and we, you can drill back into the archive quite easily through this hyperlink, as I mentioned earlier. We track all recent lobbying registrations. We track the registrant, the client, and all of the registration documentation in a PDF format. Work on the street in the lobbying world, if you will. We track all privately funded travel, both among members and staff. We track all recent member personal financial disclosures. We track all recent staff financial disclosures. And we track all of today's birthdays. We're now going to move into the function tabs at the cross, uh, across the top of the dashboard. We're going to start with news and reports. There are six, but we're going to talk about two specifically, and the first one we're going to talk about is policy reports. The first thing I'm going to say is that our archive is deep. Again, we track CRS, GAO, CBO, statements of administration policy and executive orders, and we track them back decades, in some cases back to the Roosevelt era. Our policy reports section is searchable. If, for instance, we wanted to locate all policy reports that had to do with gun control, we use that as a keyword search. We're going to reset this, actually, just to make sure it isn't. We're going to choose gun control. We could search individual reports themselves. We're going to keep it open. We're going to give it a search. And in seconds, the list is built. 
So the search parameters are full text search, as we've just done, by title, if you had a report or build number, or you can search within specific date parameters. The next section we're going to talk about under news and reports is our storm feed feature, which is totally unique to Legistorm. We track in real time all press releases across all agencies and all Hill related Twitter traffic. Press releases can be press releases from the largest agencies, such as the Department of Energy, all the way to the more obscure agencies, such as the Defense Commissary Agency completely across all agencies and Twitter traffic from members and staff in real time across Congress. We can track press releases and Twitter traffic regarding specific topics. We're going to use Medicare and we're going to track, keep it, keep it specific to the House and we're going to keep it specific to the state of California, just for argument's sake. And instantly we can run that search and we can find out who has said what about Medicare in both a press release or on Twitter traffic going back as far as we'd like. And all of those press releases and Twitter traffic will be listed in this box. Now, if we wanted to be alerted to anything that's said about Medicare in Congress or in a press release across all agencies, we can set up a lightning alert. We're going to keep the parameters the same. Medicare, we're going to be alerted to both press releases and Twitter traffic. We're going to be alerted instantly. We turn this on and we forget about it. It lives in our profile. And anytime Medicare is brought up as a subject, as a topic, uh, it comes immediately to our inbox, effortlessly, immediately. And finally, under storm feed, if we wanted to track a topic in real time, we can do so. We're going to put in Kavanaugh because we're going to track conversation having to do with the hearings themselves. And we're going to keep this specific to a list Kavanaugh committee members, key senators that I've built, and we're going to search. And as press releases and Twitter traffic originate from those key members, we will be alerted. Again, press releases, Twitter traffic immediately in real time. Now we're going to move on to the people section. This is how you find individuals and groups. If you know who you're looking for, and in this case, we're going to use Marco Rubio, you can dive straight in through the search bar. And very quickly, we look down, find his name, and here's his summary. And the very first thing you're going to notice is all the information that we've collected on Marco Rubio. It's extensive. Now, from his profile, a couple of things. There are functions that you can use. You can add in, you can build a new list, name it, describe it, add it, lives in our profile. You can create a V card, which is all of his contact information, which will live in your Outlook. You can add a note. You're meeting with somebody in his office. Subject, describe it, it's time stamped. Also, you can select who el whoever else you met with or maybe who you met specifically with in his, in his office, you can add. So you can tie in individuals, you can create text, it's time stamped, and you save it. And that, inf that information will be tied to both Rubio's office in his profile and also the person you met with, and we'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. And you can create a Power Brief, which is a downloadable PDF with all the information that we've collected on Marco Rubio. Now, there are also a number of areas, that, drop down areas that you can also explore. Uh, disclosures, official expenses, financial disclosures, gifts, private travel, 
You can pull up all of his revolving door information, anybody on his staff that has moved into lobbying and vice versa. But we're going to look at the staff drop down. And we're going to go first to the staff directory. And what we get is a listing of all of his staff, both in the DC office and in all the satellite offices. You can immediately add his entire staff to a list that you're going to build. You create it, you name it, you describe it, you add it, boom, it sits in your profile immediately. And you can drill down into individuals. Here's Jonathan Arias, he's the one we met with earlier. And we'll see that the note that we kept or created after that meeting is here. And it will always be here until you unpin it. Under the People tab, I'll just walk through this briefly, you can find a staff member, you can explore committees and caucuses, you, there's a section called Congress by the Numbers, which is a graphical breakdown of Congress according to uh, age, race, religion, etc. Uh, you can highlight the best educated staffs according to their academic background. You can build a list of departing members, which should be very interesting this year. You can find a member specifically. We have a revolving door section, as we talked about, so that you can identify all those who have been involved in lobbying and have moved to the Hill or vice versa. And we also have a dist, excuse me, a zip to district matching section. But in this case, we're going to go to the advanced staff search. So this is when you're trying to build groups. And the first thing you see is a, uh, is a, a search section at the top where you can search by name, by committee, organization, by member offices, by title, by education, military, gender, by chamber, location, political party. If you wanted to build a list of all those who had attended Stanford University in the House, in D.C., in the Democratic Party, Within seconds, that list is built. 16 results. And you add them to a list, a new one that you'll create, name it, describe it, add it, and it's done. We're going to show you a number of ways to build lists here. We set our search. Moving into the lower section, which is the show more options section. If you wanted to build a list of all staffers having to do with agriculture and food in the state of California, within seconds on the fly, that list is created. Fifty-four results, create a list, name it, describe it, add it, instantly it sits in your profile. It's important to remember to reset after every search. We're gonna look at a couple of other lists. If you wanted, in the lower section, the show more options, if you wanted to build a list of all house administrators, all members, all staffers on the House Administration Committee, you do it instantly. Forty-six results. You create a new list, name it, describe it, add it. It instantly lives in your profile. And finally, if you wanted to, for instance, combine the top and bottom sections. If you wanted to identify all staffers who had attended Tulane University in all offices, for instance, within a couple of seconds, that list is built. Collected so that you can create a new list, name it, describe it, add it. And save it. I mean, we've just built over the course of five minutes uh, several extensive lists. 
We're now going to move on to disclosures. We provide earmarks, foreign gifts, lobbying, official expenses, personal financial disclosures, salaries, trips, and turnover. We're going to talk about three, and we're going to start with official expenses. If you were a chief of staff and you were vetting companies that wanted to do business with you, and you didn't know anything about a specific company, we're going to go into I Constituent, for instance. You're a chief of staff. Uh, you're thinking of doing business with I Constituent. They're a tech company on the Hill. You're a senator. You're in a Senate office, and you do a very quick search, and you get a list of all the offices that are using I Constituent. Ted Cruz uses it. We'll go into that page, and this links with the MRA, which is a a resource that allows you what congressional offices are spending on what items. And we we'll explode this a little bit. We find that very difficult to see, but you can see I constituent right here. And you can see that Ted Cruz's office is spending 15 grand per annum with I constituent. So you can now call your counterpart in Cruz's office, talk to him about the pricing, and talk to him about delivery maybe talk about the help desk. So you can actually speak with I Constituent uh, as a vendor from an informed standpoint. If, you're a, if you were a chief of staff and you were looking to hire, you can go into our salary section and go into salary disclosures. And if, for instance, you were thinking of hiring, A legislative director. You can see that the median salary for a LD in the Senate is 37K plus. And it gives you information to start. You go into the LD breakdown and you go in according to, so we want to keep the information specific to the Senate, choose Senate, and you analyze what you find is a lot of information that you can then use in the hiring process. You can look at salaries over time as they, as they pertain to the, the LD role. And you can look at rather uh, deeper information. You can see that, you know, what, what's the average LD in the Senate in the DC office, 137 plus, as we mentioned. 99% of the LDs reside in DC, so that's the relevant figure. Only 1% reside in the district, so this is rather ir irrelevant. So it, again, it gives you more information to, to, uh, to look at. What's the average age? 35, you know, that can play in. And what is the educational standard? What's the academic standard of your average LD? It's a bachelor's degree. So it gives you information in which to have a, an informed hiring conversation. And finally, we're going to talk about, through disclosures, turnover. And we're going to look at staff turnover, of course. Just a couple of things. There are a number of ways of looking at turnover information. But just to give you an example, we're going to keep it specific to the Senate. And give it a search. We get an overall snapshot of what turnover rates are like in general. If we wanted to go into historical data, we can do so. We'll keep it specific to 2017 because that's the most recent full year for turnover. And again, it gives a, uh, a chief of staff or a member an idea of how their turnover compares to the rest of the Senate. It might flag a problem or something that they might want to keep an eye on. We talked about events and we talked about hearings. Just a couple of words about town halls. We track town halls from all member offices. Uh, we scour the internet, a number of different sources. We rely on not only the member's site, but again, a number of different resources so that the information is as complete as we can make it. It can be viewed through a calendar. If you were a journalist and you wanted to locate or be appraised of when a town hall is taking place, you can do so. You can set up a lightning alert and be alerted ahead of time. You can track it for changes. 
calendar goes back to 2013. If we looked at top members in general, and we kept it specific to, I mean, we can look at individual offices, but in this case, we're just going to look at the Senate in general. You can get an idea of who holds town halls uh, on the most frequent basis. We're now going to move off hill to a section called State Storm. This is a breakdown of the state legislature. Again, we're off hill. And if we move into a specific state of Montana, for instance, we get a list of all the Senate and House members. And if we go into the individual House members or the, or the Senate members, regardless, we get what we see as a layout that is identical to what we saw on the hill with all the functionality that we are used to. We can go to specific committees. If we wanted to identify all of the thought leaders in agriculture within the state of Montana, we can pull that list of committee members up immediately and we can add them to an existing list or create a new one as we've done in the past, name it, describe it, add it, save it, and those members are on our list living in our profile immediately. We see that Alan Redfield is the chair. We can go into his profile. And we can see that given that he's the chair of the Agricultural Committee, he might be the one that we want to reach out to. And finally, at the state level, we can drill into individual districts. And we have District 37. Bill Harris is the state rep. He's a Republican. We can add him to a list that we're building. Add him, save, done. And finally, under State Storm, we have an advanced search whereby, if we wanted to build a list of all the thought leaders on agricultural committees across the US, we can select all states, search. This is going to be amongst Democrats and Republicans. And that list is built instantly. We can add that built list. We can create a list, rather, out of all of those members or committee members that we've, we've collected. Name it, describe it, add it immediately. It lives in our profile. So that is a broad overview of Legistorm. In closing, what I would say is that Legistorm in general tracks a vast sea of congressional data, which you can readily filter and then have delivered straight to your inbox according to the issues, people, and events that are most important to you. Thank you.